Welcome to the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. We are proclaiming liberty one show at a time. And the next one starts right now. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Clint Armitage, I am back after the Feast of Tabernacles. I am back again. Thanks for um, being patient and waiting on me. And I appreciate you coming by and listening right now today. So last week, or the, you know, the, the Feast of Tabernacles happened and, and was able to kind of not as much relax as I wanted to, but that's not necessarily what that feast is for anyway. It's celebrating, you know, in the wilderness. It's kind of to commemorate the Jews when they were in the wilderness and they lived in booths. And that's one of the reasons for the Feast of Tabernacles is to remember that. Anyways, but the main issue for me or main thing for me is during the Feast of Tabernacles, there's the first day and then the last day of the feast. And those are kind of solemn convocation days where you don't really work or do anything. And that's my thing is trying not to work all the time. So that's what I was really trying to focus on with uh, taking a break or a pause with the podcast was limiting my work for God because I want to change the way I think about things. So for instance, I want to stop focusing on working for God and I want to start focusing on becoming God's work. Do you understand the difference there? You know, I, I do a lot of work for God, right? Do a lot of busy work, do a lot of things. But really, I want to start becoming His work. And that's what I, I, I want to start doing more of and get better at. Because I, I really feel like uh, sometimes I can get caught up in working for God and doing things for God when all He really wants is me to be with Him and for Him to be with me. And that's kind of like being God's work and, and allowing God to direct me and not always trying to do stuff and, and just sit and be still sometimes, you know? So that's kind of what I was uh, trying to focus on during the Feast of Tabernacles. I thought it was a good time to do that. Um, I did have a lot of stuff going on too, but my main focus was the first day and the last day of it. Um, I was having some trouble on the last day trying not to work for God or do work because, you know, life comes along and it you have to do a bunch of stuff and you kind of get distracted. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to to do that. And so I appreciate you, um, you know, allowing me to do that and coming back and listening now. And today's podcast will be called, well, actually it is called Fact Versus Truth. Although when you think about that, you think, well, that kind of doesn't really make sense. Fact and truth, aren't they kind of the same thing? And so what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to read from John chapter 4, and we're going to we're going to actually look at the differences between truth and fact, and how the devil can actually use fact, right, to lie to you, even though there's some facts. He uses that to lie to you, to bring fear in your life, even though it's factual. And Truth is different because it gives you the whole picture. You know, like it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is everything. That's what that is encompassing. He's encompassing everything. And when you do speak truth, you speak life. You speak the way, right? If we're speaking truth and God is truth, Jesus is truth. You know, even when Pontius Pilate was questioning Jesus before he was crucified, what is truth? Because Jesus was saying, if you knew the truth, and he says, what is truth? Not even realizing that he had the epitome of truth standing in front of him. And that's where we get deceived. You know, La Pontius Pilate, he was deceived. He didn't realize he had the truth in front of him. Again, the whole picture, the whole person, the whole life, everything was in front of him. The truth was in front of him. That was the truth. He is the truth. And Pontius Pilate did not understand it. He didn't see it. Probably didn't want to see it. And that's why he avoided, you know, doing the right thing and standing for truth. So anyways, enough about that. The differences between fact and truth is this. It's simple. Fact can be true, but it's not fully the truth because facts can just be a part of the truth, but not the full whole truth. Now, when you're talking about the truth, like you're talking about Jesus, he is encompassing everything. He is the full truth. So I'm going to read uh, John chapter four, and we're going to talk about uh, what 
the difference is, and we're going to actually see it, we're going to see the difference in that chapter there. Now, this is about the the story of when Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, okay? So I'm going to start, uh, let's say, in verse uh, 9, chapter 4 of John, and I'm going to start in verse 9. So he headed to uh, Samaria, and he met a woman at the well, and it was a Samaritan woman. So I'm going to start in verse 9 as they start the conversation. Or actually, I'm sorry, verse 7, verse 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. So the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. It, there was it was a religious thing. It was a you know a thing like Jews felt that Samaritans were half breeds and they weren't full Jews, so they did not consider them real Jewish people or, or people of God. So the Samaritans and Jews did not get along. The temple was in Jerusalem. Samar you know Samaritans didn't think that they should go to Jerusalem to worship. They had their own thing. So the Jews kind of treated them poorly, and the Samaritans treated the Jews poorly. They just didn't get along. So anyways, so that's why she said, "Why are you asking me for?" A drink because the Jews don't associate with Samaritans. All right, verse 10. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring to eternal life. So the in verse 15 it says, The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. And... <laughs> She's still thinking it's kind of a physical thing when Jesus, Jesus is speaking. He's actually speaking truth right here, but he's speaking spiritual truth. All right, so she says, "Give me some water, so I'm not, so I won't get thirsty anymore. I don't have to come up here and work and and draw this water in the heat of the day, that kind of thing." He says in verse 16, he told her, "Go, call your husband and come back." And then she says in verse 17, I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. You have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now has come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. So again, he he tells the truth. So let's break it down. Let's break down. Let's look at the differences between fact and truth. This is the facts. She, her fact was that she did not have a husband. That was, that was fact. She didn't. But Jesus actually brought out the truth. The truth is that you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. You see how the facts can, it doesn't paint the whole picture. She said, I have no husband. That's a fact. But it only gives you a little portion or a small picture of the whole story, then Jesus actually brings out the whole truth and the whole story. You're right when you said you have no husband. Fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. And what you have said is quite true. So you see how facts can be just a portion and the truth is the whole thing. It's the whole picture. And so what I want to talk about is how the devil speaks facts, but he does it to bring fear. Okay. But the truth is the whole story and it overcomes the fear fear that facts can bring and when the devil uses facts to bring fear into our lives. So, for instance, the rent is due the first of the month. You don't have enough money to pay the rent and it's the middle of the month. What does the devil do? The devil says, you can't pay your rent and the rent is due in two weeks. You can't pay it. Now, is the devil speaking facts? Yes, he is speaking facts. You don't have enough money at that time to pay rent that is coming up in two weeks. Here's another one. You have an illness and it doesn't look like you're going to recover from it. Is that a fact? 
Yeah, that's a fact, but it's not the whole truth. It's just a fact. At this time, the doctor may have said, hey, there's no cure for this disease. Let's say cancer. There's no cure. So if the devil tells you, hey, there's no cure, it doesn't look like you're going to live. Uh, percentages are not good. Well, that may be the facts, right? But that's not the whole truth because you're not equating or you're not including in the equation that Jesus saves. You're not including in the equation that God can do whatever he wants to do. He can cure cancer right now. Blink of an eye. It's not up to us. It's up to him, right? It's not up to us. So we have to live it on him. And that's why we have to know the truth. The truth is Jesus. We have to rely on the truth. Again, we have to rely on God because he ha He is the whole picture. We cannot control everything in this life. And if we focus only on the facts of life, we'll never get the whole picture, which is the truth of life. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All right. Well, that's it for this uh, episode. Thanks for joining me again. And I appreciate you being patient as I came back from the Feast of Tabernacles. And, you know, it's kind of good to be back. And I'll, I'll check you next time. <laughs> I'm Clint Armitage, and this is the Liberty Podcast. Thanks for coming back. Until next time, stay safe, stay motivated, and keep seeking liberty. Episode of the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. If you want to get in touch, email us at info at clintarmitage.com.